All right, uh, touch base uh, with the fund manager to get his views on uh, uh, the market as well as what uh, they're doing with their sector calls. Anand Radhakrishnan, who's CFA, Head of Equity and Portfolio Manager at Franklin Tem Templeton Asset Management, joins us in on Media Fund Manager to discuss the Franklin India Blue Chip Fund. Uh, Anand, good to have you on the show. Uh, the fund has outperformed the benchmark over the last three to five years, but the last year particularly was uh, not so impressive in terms of fund returns. What is your strategy with this fund and how would you rationalize the underperformance? Would you attribute it largely to your overweight stance on banks, which haven't done well? There are a couple of reasons why the fund underperformed the benchmark over the last one year. First was our relatively high exposure to the telecom sector. Uh, and the telecom sector stocks, uh, especially the top holding within that sector, have not delivered uh, the adequate returns to the fund. That is the primary reason. Second reason has been uh, that uh, our exposure to the information technology sector is uh, slightly below that of the benchmark. And uh, as you might know that uh, the information technology sector has delivered very good return over the last one year partly because of uh, uh, rupee depreciation and partly because of reviving global growth. And uh, these are the two primary reasons. Uh, of course, we have had overweight exposure to the, the PSU sector, both in the oil and gas uh, segment as well as on the natural resources. Uh, and PSU stocks as a whole, again, struggled under the current environment, despite being uh, fairly cheap stocks. And these are the three primary reasons why the fund relatively underperformed the benchmark over the last one year. Hmm. The market has been uh, more growth driven and concentrated in terms of the up move, uh, largely you know, centered around FMCG, Pharma and IT names. Uh, are these your conviction sectors as well? Uh, while we continue to remain constructive on the healthcare and the IT sector, we do think that the consumer staples are trading at a significantly higher valuation than the long-term averages. Uh, and that's, that's the reason why we would like to maintain a cautious stance on the consumer staples, while we would like to maintain a reasonably constructive view on the health care and the IT sector. There's been a fair amount of speculation due to US FDA uh, bans coming in on, uh, you know, and the scrutiny on some of the Indian pharma names, uh, despite stocks like Sun Pharma making record highs. Uh, have you altered your pharma portfolio in any way over the last few uh, weeks? No, Indian, Indian healthcare companies have a fairly robust model. Many of them have a thriving exposure to the domestic demand as well as, uh, as, well as uh, uh, their ability to tap into the developed markets. The so-called regulated market is pretty high. However, uh, uh, they need to invest a fair amount of money and efforts to build global scale as well as uh, global quality facilities and uh, some of the companies do this uh, well and some tend to run into problems and uh, and we think this is a learning curve and many of the indian companies eventually will uh, uh, through consistent investment both in monetary as well as efforts should be able to try uh, to handle this particular problem which they are facing uh, due to regulatory requirements uh, we again remain fairly positive and our exposure within the healthcare sector have tended to uh, navigate this uh, regulatory circumstances fairly well. Mm. So how would you react uh, to the ban uh, that's been imposed on Ranbaxy uh, by the US FDA? Oh, an isolated incident of uh, an action against an individual company can be uh, can uh, dent the sector's confidence, especially with the investors. But uh, we should not read beyond the particular company, as these are very case-to-case -case incidences, and um, the entire uh, all the companies within the sector should not be uh, broad broad brushed uh, uh, with the same kind of a caution. That is our view. And. Uh, uh Okay, of course, and you know, we just spoke about our ITs, that's a good run uh, with earnings and your biggest allocation is still in fee. I mean, I don't see TCS or HCL Tech in the top holdings. Uh, there is some exposure to Wipro. Why is that? Well, we don't try to comment on individual uh, stocks and the rationale for holding or not holding, but uh, suffice to say that some might be uh, on the reason for uh, uh, relative valuation versus the others. 
uh, the omission of some might be a genuine uh, uh, genuine oversight and might have missed picking that stock having said that uh, we do not have to have investment in all the sec all the stocks within the sector where we do have convictions where we do have comfort in terms of valuation uh, we would like to tend to concentrate our holdings uh, within uh, within the sector so our current bets include exposure to stocks like infosys cognizant technologies wipro mm. will banks continue to be an overweight for you given the asset quality concerns that have uh, come up uh, not just in psu earnings but also some of uh, the earnings of private banks uh, this time around our biggest exposure within the banking sector is towards uh, more towards private sector banks and our view uh, there has been that retail credit is less vulnerable to uh, uh, non performing and uh, non performing asset cycle than the uh, corporate credit or uh, project lending related uh, credit and this seem to be playing fairly well while we still we do see an emergence of uh, 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 npa related problem in the uh, small seg- sub segments of the retail credit like uh, uh, cv loans etc uh, it won't be as big an issue as it is in, uh, uh, in the corporate sector so we continue to remain fairly positive on the private sector uh, banks space the second reason is uh, private sector banks continue to uh, uh, be uh, less capital starved than the uh, public sector banks so their ability to uh, raise capital when they require uh, is uh, uh, helps them gain market share during good times uh, and that's the reason why uh, we think private sector banks will continue to grow at a pace higher than the public sector banks and we remain confident on that i don't see any big consumer name dabur hul itc nestle there is marico but what's the call on consumption companies Generally speaking, the flight to safety and quality has re-rated the consumer staple companies to a near uh, all-time high valuations. Uh, this is true for uh, large companies like Lever or ITC or so. While they continue to grow at a reasonably healthy space, we don't see any scope for uh, uh, valuation to re-rate further from here. In fact, we do see a risk of valuation de-rating for some of these stocks because as the growth moderates over a period of time, uh there there's a good chance that the valuations will deteriorate and that's the reason why we are wary of having high exposure to this sector we nevertheless have um our small exposure in some of the sub segments of the consumer staples like paints and hair oil etc these are structurally long positions we continue to maintain that all right uh, just one final word anand on which sectors are you underweight on at this point we underweight uh, uh, we are underweight on capital goods and infrastructure segments that's uh, uh, one particularly large sector where we are currently underweight we are significantly underweight consumer staples as i explained earlier the other sectors where we are uh, relatively underweight are uh, metals these are the three sectors i can uh, say as where we are currently underweight Okay Anand thanks very much for joining us and speaking about uh, Franklin India Blue Chip Fund uh, appreciate your time and your views uh, we'll uh, get our viewers a quick update on BNSN the stock game and how the tally is one day ahead of uh, the end of the contest that is for this week AK Prabhakar is in the number 1 spot followed by Sandeep Agli and then that's what the come That is a wrap on this leg of closing trades and tomorrow's trades from Tanvi Masov thanks so much for watching